Hi, my name is Zero Ireland, and I'm very proud and happy to be here today with you wonderful people. It's good to see you all look so beautiful. Um, why do you do what you do? You see, I'm a young person who had an early struggle. My mother and I live in a refugee camp where I was born in Africa Coast, and there are a lot of things that we had to go through at a very young age. My mother was a high school dropout. She would normally leave me at home, you know, go to the market first, sell a while in school. When she comes back, um, she would leave me at home to go to um, after school, what is like what is called like the night school. And she would normally leave me with this um, young girl who happened to be my caretaker. This girl was um, basically um, 23 to 25, something between them, I'm not too sure, I guess, not a year ago. But what happened is she, this lady who was an Avora and French woman, at age five, which I was, consistently abused me sexually. I remember there were a lot of times she would force me into going to sexual activity at a young age, and later on she would threaten to do something bad to me, um, when I just dared to say anything. And I kept quiet for a couple of years. Uh, that led to me being very sick. And I had to undergo an operation. But there was one thing. You see, there should always be a why for whatever you do. But many of us do a lot of amazing things. Many of you are into a lot of amazing things that you do things. But the real truth is, why are you in those fields? Why are you doing what you're doing? You see, the first step to fulfillment is being able to self-define why are you here. It's being able to self-define yourself. It's being able to find your purpose. There are many questions that sometimes that are so hard to understand, so hard. But once you are well-defined, once you're self-defined, once you have your values in place, you always have to understand why are you doing what you're doing. You see, every single person, to be honest, needs to know that there's a need to have value in whatever you do. So I have been into activism and advocacy for a long time. A lot of people are like, you well, know me to be a human rights activist, a children's rights activist, a women's right. So everywhere I go, that is my value. That's what people define me by. So I tend to stick in that area why I also know all the things I'm doing. Now, even if everybody else is doing something, the truth is we need to understand that there is a space that everybody finds themselves that regardless, if you are not the one making change in that space, there is a huge vacuum. That is why we have, we've had so many people who have come up to lead so many different things. That is why you need to understand that you alone cannot do everything. But in your space, you have a responsibility to change that space that you are. So that is why you have to ask yourself why you. That is why you need to find your voice. That is why you need to find your self-fulfillment. And you see, these things are very good to do. They are very easy to say. But trust me when I tell you that from my experience and from my uh, a lifetime as an advocate, an active activist in Liberia, there is one thing that people, that most young people, are consumed by unknowingly most times, and that is the dark side. There is a dark side to being passionate about whatever you do. Now, it is good to find a fulfillment, but it's also good to know that whatever you choose to do, there is a dark, dark side. It is going, and that dark side is going to push you. It's going to make you see side of you, see places of you, see certain aspect of your life that you did not know before. It's going to make you uncomfortable. It's going to make you challenge your ability. It's going to make you challenge your potential that you have. It's going to make you challenge your self-esteem. Those are the dark side. And unfortunately, most times, those dark side, you have, you have to go through them alone. In 2017, we had this case of a lawmaker 
who allegedly raped a 13 year old girl and got her impregnated. The story came out, a couple of young people as myself took on the responsibility to call for justice for this little girl. We protested, we petitioned the Speaker of the House, then it was um, Speaker Ellis Staller, to recuse this lawmaker of his position and send him to court. And that particular uh, activity had us, some of us arrested, at least for the first time. And I remember that morning I was waking up to go to work when I got a call from the court that um, you were needed at court. I knew you were out like, yes, and then we got the code. And it was on a Friday. And that is when I knew that as every young person in Liberia, whosoever you are, citizen, do not any day, any time of your life, allow a policeman to arrest you on a Friday. Because you know what that means? You are going for a vacation. Yeah. That means you're going to be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Because the police don't work on the weekend. So they arrested us on Friday. And you already know, we had to stay there up to Monday. And then, luckily, we got a release on bail and all of that. Why am I explaining this to you? We passed that. A couple of months later, I had an opportunity to speak at an event in the US. And I have done everything possible to go to the US. This morning, I went to the US Embassy to send an interview. And then everything went well until something happened. During the time of that protest, during the time of the, uh, the activities with the, with the lawmaker, there were a lot of stories that was on the internet. There were a lot of news that was reporting us. There were a lot of news that said we got arrested and all of that. So there was this picture of me in the newspaper I remember that morning. So I saw from the screen of the, from the class, the reflection, of the person, the lady I was interviewing at the embassy, the guy went to show her the picture on the phone. And then she turned to me and said, have you ever been arrested before? And I was like, yes. For what reason? I explained. Unfortunately, that was a senior year where won the elections. So she was like, you've done all these amazing things. Do you want to leave Liberia and not be able to make your first decision to vote? Because I was just, I just, I just turned 18 that year. So I'm like, mm, I believe that, you know, when I go, things will get better and me going is a way to impact other people. But it's just like, you know what? Let's just not deny you. But I do think you have a voice and I do think you should stay. Can you imagine? I was frustrated. Now, this might seem very, very much a good thing to them, but I was bothered because I wanted to go to the US. And I had gotten denied of a U.S. visa because I stood up. Because I did start a school. That's what your dad side do sometimes. Sometimes your dad side will challenge you in a way that seems good, but personally, it hurts. And most especially, you go through them alone. And if you're that strong, if you are not consistent and if you are not focused on what you want, you lose your way. And how do you walk through this dark side? The first thing is persistent. There are lots and lots of young people who are not persistent. Persistency is like innovation. It's doing something the first time you feel like it. Do it again, you feel. You do it again, you feel. You do it again, you feel. I'm a very Bible believing person. There's a, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, when you fall one time, you should wake up seven, seven times, right? So that is what persistency is. There are, a lot of young, there are a lot of people who have invented a lot of different things that did not get to that invention at the first time. So there are a lot of young people who miss their way because of this dark side. When this dark side challenge you, you tend to change to want to do something else. Just because you are not getting answers now, does not mean you are not getting answers tomorrow. I tell you for free, I met Joe almost four times in this country. Four speaking, four standing out for the voiceless. 
And all of the times I've had jail, trust me, my parents did not know about it. When you are persistent in what you do, you find a value, you find that fulfillment. Because nobody becomes persistent for what they do if they don't find a value. Now, I want everybody sitting in here today. Every one of you, I need you to ask yourself one question. Why are you into what you're into? Do you do what you do because other people are doing it? Do you do what you do because you need to do something? Now there are a lot of young people who do things because of relevance. That's the first thing about being, finding your voice and having a why. You need to be persistent. Also, commitment is an important factor. Nobody does something and succeed at it without being committed. But whenever you define why you're doing what you're doing, those things, those obstacles, those barriers, we will not be anything. Matter of fact, you find pleasure going through them. Why did I explain my story from the start? You see, as a young person in elementary, I thought I joined advocacy and activism because I was very good at talking or because I love to be in the spotlight or because I was always trying to prove a point. I'm a young person who have gone through a lot at a very tender age. I remember, matter of fact, as, as I am right now, I'm not very old, but I'm old. I don't even know my biological father since I was born. I've never seen him before. Because there's so many, that's the first episode of my life struggle. I believe as a young person, I started to struggle before I was even born. My father, biologically, was my mother's teacher in high school, so he was already married. He had to deny the pregnancy. Then I had to go through another episode of sexual abuse at a young age. But all of those things did not occur to me until one day I was sitting in this training when I was very young in elementary. And there was this guy who talked about he being King Ray in Norway, he's a Norwegian, and how it took him so much years to come out to explain, to tell even his parents that this thing happened to him. But when he finally came out, the impact it has had on his personal life in the life of others. You see, in that moment, when he explained his story, my why was defined. Then I realized that I wasn't trying to be in the spotlight. Then I realized that I wasn't trying to just prove my simplicity or trying to prove a point to my colleagues that I could speak more than them. But then I realized that one, there was an internal passion. Two, this internal passion came or was sourced from a reservoir of later experience. I have gone through these things before. I got sick. Matter of fact, some of the things that happened to me when I was little, and I fight for that operation, still at some point has an impact on my life. That point, I dug deep within my soul and formed my why. And I redefined that why. Because that was the reason. That point, my redefinition of my why was as long as I live, I am going to make sure in my weakest ways and strength and energy to ensure that not on my watch that any child will have to go through whatever I want to what I want you as a, as a child, regardless of your gender. So that was why I, of all of the things in the world, of all 
one of the societal illnesses that the U.S. confronted with. That was the reason I chose that one thing in the space of children, women, and girls activists. And I know that that moment redefined who I am. That moment redefined what I was, what I stand for, at, at what extent I could go to achieve what I wanted to see. So it did not matter how many times I got arrested. So it did not matter how many times I got blacklisted. So it did not matter if I didn't even get a governmental job or an appointment in the government or whatsoever. That didn't matter. Because I felt that my self-fulfillment was based on the fact that as long as I'm a Liberian, as long as I'm on earth, I'm going to do everything possible to ensure that no child has to experience this whatsoever abuse. There is a deep reason why most people don't see good in what they are doing or the places they find themselves. It's because you haven't defined your why. So young people sitting here today, I know I don't have all of the practical examples or practical life experience to share with you. But as you leave from here today, if there's one thing I want you to reflect on, if there's one thing I want you to think about, regardless of the space you find yourself, whether you're a social worker, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're into technology, whether you're into business, whether you're a politician, wheresoever you find yourself. Find your why. Define who you are. Find your voice. Search in that deep soul and feed on the energy that comes from there. Because it's based on those energy, you become persistent. It's based on the energy you put in time, diligence, commitment, and all of those things coupled together will yield the results that you personally want to see. Thank you very much.